like a bunch of birds uh, suddenly turned loose. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I, I want to welcome all the folks to the old corral once again for our little song fest. We always enjoy having you. So if you get your comfortable seat up there on the top rail, uh, we're going to call on Skeeter to bring us our first tune. He's got one he's been running over in his mind here for some time called Way Out There. How about that, Skeeter? All right, Pappy. I'm going to get Sally to help me on this last yodel. That's the way. A lonely spot I know where no man will go where the shadows have overrun. I was riding free on that old LT softly humming the southern Turned around way out west in Kansas. There's a man named Cope I 
cat Way out west in Kansas You can't tell who he's looking at Way out west in Kansas He cries because he's such a wreck The tears run down the back of his neck He don't look straight to me by head Way out west in Kansas <laughs> That's all right. Well, that was on this storytelling time, ain't it? You know, you know, kids, back in the days of the old West, there was a powerful lot of action going on all the time. Travel wasn't easy, and even when you rode a horse. And when it come to getting places by stagecoach, you didn't find yourself away, and none when you said goodbye to it. I remember a story that Doc Nelson told me about a stagecoach ride he had out near the Cimarron Range. He was traveling as a passenger. Had a broken leg at the time. Picked up from trying to bed down a bronco that had an ornery habit of kicking sideways. Well, Doc was riding as comfortable as he could on the inside of the stage. Him and the mail sacks fighting it out uh, on the, about the feet. <laughs> when, when a passel of gents with masks over their faces rode out into the road, shooting and hollering and generally making it plain that they intended to hold up the stage. Well, Smokey Williams was in the box of the coach and before he could get his Winchester into action, a slug from a six-shooter ripped off the main part of his trigger finger. Yeah. <clears throat> so, when the hold-up men finally pulled the horses to a stop, there wasn't nothing left for Smokey to do but light down from the box with his hands reaching for sunspots. Well, by that time, Doc had gotten the mail sacks off of his shoulders, and as he had $45 and a gold watch he didn't want to lose, he started shooting. The first bullet kicked up a bucket full of dirt near one of the road agents, and the other five did a lot better. Doc might have done all right by himself if the noise hadn't scared the horses. They didn't like it, and with a sudden jerk that threw Doc to the floor of the coach, they bolted. And two of the outlaws tried to stop them, but the road suddenly narrowed down and ran through a clump of big trees there, and there wasn't much room there for a horseman to ride alongside. So when Doc finally got them mail bags off of him and leaned out of the window... He saw that he was riding the runaway. Well, when struggling, he opened the trap door in the roof and he pulled himself out on the top of the coach. By that time, they were thundering down grade, with a mountain rising up on one side of the road and a thousand foot drop on the other. And the coach was beginning to gain on the horses. So Doc had to whip him for all he was worth to keep him from having the whole shebang pile up on that narrow road. Yep. Well, I'll tell you. The doc wasn't very happy at that minute, and he began to feel even more uncomfortable when he looked ahead and saw that they were thundering toward one of those sharp turns, like. But there wasn't nothing he could do but hang on and keep the horses pounding. Yeah, when they hit that curve, the animals plowed up the ground and went on around. The front wheels followed and hung on, but the rear wheels slid out into space. Then one of the funniest things that happened that I ever heard of. The horses and the front wheels were kicking up so much rock and gravel into the air that it built a solid path out over that precipice for the rear wheels to roll back to safety. <laughs> yeah, part of it was still hanging in space there when Doc finally pulled the horses to a halt. <laughs> well, I think that calls for a song right now. And Sally, I'd like to hear you sing something about hoof beats on the prayer. Huh? All right, Kathy, we'll do that.
Well, folks, looks like we're going to have to lock up the old grill for this little song fest. But we'd certainly like to have you join us the next time we get together. How about reserving that spot on the old top rail for you, huh? In the meantime, this is Fabby Cheshire talking for all the gang saying so long, everybody. So long. Oh, <laughs> oh,